You're stranded on a desert island for five years with only five games and five willing players. What games do you bring? In this first video in our board game hypothetical series, Legendary Tactics will try to persuade you that our picks are truly the only picks. I'm here with Cax to lay the ground rules for our desert island scenario. I hope you've got some good choices lined up, Cax. Oh, I sure do. What are the conditions? We're looking at five years, five willing players, five games. You can game for up to three hours per day, which is 5,475 hours over five years. It's a small tropical island, warm temperatures with a decent amount of rain. We'll assume that shelter, water, fire, and food are accessible, but not plentiful. The games are to help the group with their mindset and to keep people happy and entertained. The size of the game doesn't matter, we'll just assume we were on a huge boat when we crashed, and by board games we mean any game, whether or not it has a board. So what are your initial considerations, Cax? Well, I think it's got to be something that's going to be uh, weather resistant, uh, durable. I think you're going to want to think about something that uh, lends an expertise to the game or to uh, to mm -hmm. your or to your uh, you know the people you're with and, mastery over time yes exactly and maybe uh, has appeal to other players as well so maybe to make this interesting let's say that uh, once either of us has chosen a game that other can't choose the same game deal I'll start then because I know you'll definitely choose this one and we should get this obvious choice out of the way early so hands down the most versatile portable durable universal and infinitely replayable game is not just one game it's millions of games all built into a deck of 52 cards they're simple or complex short or long luck or skill based uh, poker for example is a great skill based game whereas war is pure and utter luck so for those reasons hands down my first choice is a deck of cards I see what you did there, and I love it. And yes, you completely stole my number one. So instead, I'll go with something much more practical and a game that will provide a roadmap to living on an island. Do tell. Robinson Crusoe. Nice. If you're going to be going on a desert island, you better know exactly what you're up against. And this game, it's got six scenarios, and heck, I think we should throw in the Voyage of the Beagle, and it's five scenarios to boot. Uh, I mean, we do have five years uh, to put in after all. So these will definitely give you a taste of what's in store for you on the island. So not the game Friday, the solo game. Oh, maybe we throw that in too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if we run out of ideas. Okay. Well, my second pick is well known for being one of the longest board games that people actually enjoy playing, and that's Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, which is the epitome of desert island gaming experiences. Uh, number one, it takes forever. It's infinitely replayable because it's got variable player powers. It's intensely complex, layered, and nuanced, so it's going to take a super long time to master and also a long time to get sick of. Plus, you've got all the miniatures, which is it's essentially like having little toys on the island in case you go mental and need to become a child again. What's your second can pick <laughs> it's uh it's funny that you say that because i kind of went with a parallel pick in, in a lot of ways i went with uh gloomhaven is my right. is my number two Great uh pick. it has uh, a lot of the same uh, qualities that you just mentioned in uh, with twilight imperium um i also love the fact that you could take some of the characters and some of the board setups from gloom and heck you can uh transfer those into games like DD &D or uh, i know avatar is another fun one that we've done that's kind of that role playing um it also comes with all the miniatures in between between twilight imperium and gloomhaven with all those components we could start making our own games up i think so and you just stole my i was going to talk about DD &D and avatar so uh touche <laughs> my, <num> <laughs> yes. my third pick uh, very practical, and I said the playing cards were very durable, but compared to this game, this 100% waterproof game, Too Many Bones. You heard of that one? Ooh la la, I have not, actually. No, so it's a fantasy dice builder. It's an RPG. It, the game's going to last the full five years. It's got high-end, <laughs> premium components, and if you get sick of each other, you can play solo. It's got a co-op mode, too, so everyone's going to get along and be oh, friendly. Oh, good, that's important. Yeah, you don't get the rivalries going. And since the game comes with gobs of dice and poker style tokens, you could repurpose those to redesign your own game or use the dice to figure out who does what chore or even the tokens as a form of currency on the island. So lots of uses for the components in this game. Oh, too many bones sounds like a real keeper. It is, yeah, yeah. Super chunky components, enough that they're not going to blow away in strong winds. And the game stays fresh because there's like a unique character neoprene board that's custom built into the game, and it changes every game. So let's go to your number three. It's uh, it's funny we're, we're almost paralleling each other with different games uh, because I, I took a similar, uh, very durable kind of game here, uh, and it, it could probably withstand the uh, the harshest typhoon, uh, mm. and that is Clask. Okay, yeah. Now right. you might lose the the game ball. I think that's one that you got to really be mindful of. <laughs> 
That keep, would kind of ruin it. Keep that in your pocket. But uh, like you a know. chestnut or a walnut that's rolling right. around after a couple of years. Why not, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah it that's the Swedish. Is that the Swedish game? I believe so. It's that uh, the game with the uh, that you uh, use. It's almost like a, a hockey kind of uh, game with the magnets underneath the board. And uh, I, that get boring. Like, why? Why do you want to bring that game? Well, great question. So it, it's a. It's one I've always wanted to pick up. So I mean, if I was going to go to a desert island for five years, I'd probably stop to the game store on the way and grab it. Uh, secondly, I think the fine motor and dexterity skills that you need to, to develop and build in that game to really excel is is paramount to living on a desert island. I mean, you want those skills, right? You gotta you gotta fire the arrows to kill the, the you know the, your 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 meat. Um, I also love that it's okay. waterproof. So I mean, it, it checks a lot of boxes for me. Okay, well, I'd like to hear some comments on that one and see if my viewers are as skeptical as I am here. So, uh, And while you're commenting, if you enjoy this kind of content, seize the day and stab the subscribe button as well. Nice. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. Number four. I was hoping that uh, there would be a board game that comes with a survival manual and I could have some kind of hack here. I couldn't find one. So instead, I'll stick to the spirit of this hypothetical and choose one that I know I'll never get sick of. I'm going to go right to Treasure Island from Matago, and that's for its theme. So do you remember playing that one where one player buries a treasure and all the other players have to navigate the map to oh, find where it is? Oh, I do indeed. I do indeed. Yeah, waterproof. It'll survive the harshest desert island rainstorms. It's just a fun game, and it's it's on theme. So. Now, the only... Th the only criticism I have there is, yeah, I believe you had to use a marker. I mean, oh, they're the, going to run out. They're going to run out. You're going to have to. You're going to have a to. It's a boneheaded idea. I know. You're going to have to figure something out there to uh, to continue. Maybe we use sand. Well, I didn't want to choose Cosmic Encounter because I choose that in every video that we make, but fine, I'll go with Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> Greatest game on the planet, super replayable. For reasons listed above, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let's go to my number four, and I'm going to go with Outdoor Survival. When I saw the, the second byline of this game, which is a game about wilderness skills, I knew this was a winner for a desert island, okay? You obviously haven't played the game, have you? Uh, actually, no, I haven't played it as of yet. Uh, I want to, and I am Why? Very, I'm very optimistic that it's going to teach me a thing or two about surviving in rugged conditions. It will teach you nothing about survival. This, this is a horrible game about <laughs> randomness and chance on a map from Avalon Hill. It was actually made on a bet. Uh, Jim Dunnigan oh, really? uh, bet someone that he could make a game on any theme, and the guy said, okay, we'll make one on survival, and this is the product. So, uh, But good for you for being brave and just... Picking a random. No, no, I want to bring yeah. it with me. It's coming. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, you know what? I'll look forward to playing. I, I think I played that about 30 years ago, so it'll be fun to, to get the memories going if it's you and I and the island together. Well, Flash, you're number five. Sure, yeah. If you're going to bring a game that you've never played before, then I'll do the same. So my fifth pick is Campaign for North Africa. You know that one? Uh, I do. I do indeed. <laughs> 1,500 hours to play, which is roughly three years. So if there's ever a time that this game is going to get to the table, it's when you're stuck on a desert island for five years with only four other games to choose from. So uh, it's, you know what, it's totally impractical in terms of its massive unmounted map, the cardboard counters, finding a place to actually set up the game that doesn't blow away or get rained on. On. But you know what? I wanted to bring a game that would eat up a fifth of the time on the island. And I, in fact, I would have fun with this. I would build an entire structure dedicated exclusively <laughs> to housing this game. We'd call it the command center. That is and awesome. You, you can boast when you get home from your five-year sojourn, you can boast that you're only one of a handful of people to ever play this game in its entirety. So you've got some serious bragging rights when you get back from the island. Okay. I And you said that it would take up, uh, I believe, what was it? Uh a fifth of your time? A fifth. Yeah, 1,500 hours. I, I think it would actually take up uh, maybe two-fifths because it'll take you a, a year to learn the rules to that game. Right. And if so, you want to play it twice, I mean, that's, well, that's we six have to look years. At replayability. Have we have to look at replayability, right? So, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking sure. of replayability, we come down to my number five pick, which is uh, it's a classic. It's a gem. It's chess. Ah, uh, yes. And as they say, you know, it's a, it takes a lifetime to master it, and I only have five years. Uh, I love that. It's only it's, two players. It's only two players, but you know what? I've already thought this through, and we are going to do tournament play. Okay. We'll do round robin after round robin, and it'll keep going. And over and over. When we get bored, we'll throw in some campaign for North Africa, and we'll come back to chess. Yes. Very good. Now, the only problem with that is in future videos, we are not going to be allowed to choose any of the games that we chose in this list. So no more chess. This is it for you. In that case, I choose charades. 
<laughs> no, just joking. I'm staying with chess. <laughs> okay, yeah. Charades isn't even really. A, do you even need a box for that? That's right. <laughs> so. Let us know what games you would bring in this situation and if you chose any of the same games that we did. Our next video on the board game hypothetical series is the zombie apocalypse scenario. You can stab the link on your screen right now to see that one.